presents transcribed Frank Lovejoy in I B. Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. You know, in the long story of human relations, conflict between brothers is no new item. It goes all the way back to Cain and Abel. Now you can see it all the time if you care to look, but most people don't. It's not always pleasant. Anyway, I want to tell you a story about two brothers. They were jockeys. And when they started knocking up against each other, coming down the stretch in a drive for the wire, all mixed up with a ton of horse flesh and a mess of pounding hooves, well, somebody should have run up the red flag of danger. It all goes back to yesterday morning. I was sitting in front of my typewriter trying to get a story to fit into place. It was close to 5 a.m. and the clock on the wall was sticking its tongue out at me. I just about decided to turn in what I had and let it go when I felt someone move up to my desk. Hi, Randy. It was Ben Clark, a jockey fellow I'd known on and off for years and a pretty good friend. Well, Ben, you old son of a gun, how are you? <laughs> pretty good, Randy. Good to see you. Where'd you pop out of all of a sudden? Well, a meet's opening this afternoon. I was on my way out to the track for a little morning workout. Saw the light on up here. Wondered if it was you. Well, I'm glad you came up. Sit down. Yeah, thanks. Cup of cold coffee? I keep it around for special friends. Oh, no thanks, Randy. I haven't got much time. I'm gonna have to shove in a minute. How's the wife? Oh, Stella's swell. We just got in from California a couple of days ago. Been riding out there. Yeah, I know. I've been keeping tabs on you through sports. Uh, Randy. What's the matter, Ben? You look kind of beat. I'm uh, tired, I guess. That's all. But Randy, you seen Keeney? Your brother? No. Yeah, he's no, in I... Chai, too. I thought you might have bumped into him. No, last I heard of him, he was riding apprentice down at Gulfstream. Yeah. Uh, well, he's going to ride here. He got in a couple of days ago, the boys tell me. All fired up. Ready to ride against me to prove he's better than I am or something. You two still at it, huh? Why don't you two kiss and make up? Be better all the way around. No, I don't know. We don't speak the same language, I guess. Kid's sore. Figures I was trying to hold him down when I wouldn't give him permission to ride before he was 18. <laughs> I was his guardian. It's a laugh, isn't it? Yeah. I couldn't let him ride. Didn't you know that? He was like a maniac on a horse. He'd get out there and he didn't care what happened, what he did, as long as he won. He's got to get himself killed, you know that. Couldn't let him ride for his own good. Well, he's old enough to call his own shots now, Ben. I wouldn't worry about it. No, no. The way it looks to me, he waited till I signed a ride here and then he wangled himself some mounts so he could go against me. Just hope he's got a little more sense now, that's all. Just hope he's settled down some since I saw him last. Oh, sure he has, Ben. He was just a kid then. Riding was a game to him. Winning was fun. Now it's a business to him. He doesn't want to break his neck any more than the next fellow. Yeah. Oh, look, Randy, give us a ring at the hotel tonight, will you? Still, I'd love to see you. Maybe we can take in dinner? Sure, sure. That'd be swell. Mm -hmm. Say, wait a minute. You going out to the track now? Yeah. Why don't I come along? You mind? No, not at all. Come on. Maybe that's what I need, a little fresh air. That's my trouble. Too much indoor living. It was just after dawn when we reached the track. Then went on into the jockey room to suit up, and I ambled over to the rail. And there it was, the dawn patrol, watching the horses in their early morning blowouts. Trainers, owners, exercise and stable boys, and handicappers. Each of them with a stopwatch in his hand or in his head. And most of them looking for the pot of gold at the end of a mile and an eighth. A big gray was thundering down the track, and I recognized the jock, Keeney Clark. I know right then and there why I'd gone out to the track. After Keeney finished his workout, I caught up with him, heading for the jockey room. Hey, Keeney! Keeney! Huh? Just a minute. Oh, Randy Stone, hi. Hi. I saw you on that gray. You look good. Thanks. What you doing out? They got you in sports now? Oh, no, no, no. Nothing like that. Uh, I want to talk to you. Me? Yeah. Come on, let's sit down over there. Yeah, all right. How you been, Keeney? Hey, you did pretty well down at Gulfstream. Yeah, I did okay. Okay? Leading apprentice, that's better than okay, isn't it? It's all right. Here, sit down. Yeah. 
Well, what is it, Randy? Uh, well... Go on, I'm listening. You know, you're looking at a guy who's just about ready to put his foot into something he'd do better to keep it out of. Go ahead, shoot. I talked to Ben a little earlier. Oh. He's kind of worried. He is, huh? About you. Me? What's he worried about me for? Well, I told him it was silly, but you know Ben sometimes. He's a little old woman. I hadn't noticed. Well, he's worried about the way you ride. He's afraid you're going to bust yourself up or something. You know, I think it'd be pretty nice if you went up to see him. I'll see you around, Randy. Now, Keeney, wait a minute. You got things mixed up, Randy. Ben's not worried about me. Not one bit, no. What do you mean? He's worried about himself like he's always been. That's what I mean. He's worried I'll become something and beat him out of some headlines. Ben? He's worried about two guys with the same name. He's worried he'll have to share the glory. He's been stepping on me all my life. He wants me down. He wants to be up. I don't like that. And I'll tell you something else. Oh, and I ease off. He's Wait. scared. Yeah, Ben's scared. Deep down in him, he's scared because he's getting old for a jock and soft. And it eats him because he thinks I'm better than he is. And he's right. Uh-huh. Okay, you run down now? Just a pause for a station break. Well, I think you got it wrong, Keeney. You do, huh? Okay, I got it wrong. You got it right. You got all the facts. Well, You no. know everything that's going on between us? No, I don't. Okay, you gave yourself an answer. Now, listen, Randy. Ben's business is Ben's and mine is mine. Yeah, and neither of them is mine. Yeah, I know. Okay, Keeney, you told me. I'll see you around. Yeah, he told me all right. Some of what he said, at least, was true. I didn't have all the facts, and my business was elsewhere. A lesson I have to keep relearning on occasion. So I tucked my tail between my legs and decided to leave bad enough alone. I checked out of the track, stopped off for a bite to eat, figuring the affair of the feuding brothers was behind me. As often is the case, I was wrong. It was 8 a.m. when I got back to the office to see if I had any mail, and the phone caught me. Hello. Randy? Yeah? Stella Clark. Oh, hi, Estelle. Busy? No, no, I saw Ben today. Randy. Hmm. I've got an extra ticket for the races this afternoon. Same box as me. Do you want to come? Well, I don't know, Stell. That's usually my... I su- wish you'd come, Randy. Please come. I want to talk to you. It's important. Well, I'll Stel- leave the ticket at Wilco. Bye. Stell, uh, hey. Oh. <laughs> I'd gone on home, caught a few hours of sleep, and made the track just before the first race. I shoved my way through the crowd over to the boxes, and I saw her. Blonde, a little heavier than before. She was sitting there nervously fingering her program, then she looked around. Randy, I was beginning to wonder if you'd come. I'm sorry, Stell made it as soon as I could. Here, come on, sit down. Yep. I need a chance to check the program. Who's been on? Number four, Boson's mate. I better get down to the window if I want to put my two bucks on him. Keeney's on number one, Lou Flyer. Yeah? Randy, they had a big argument a little while ago. Keeney and Ben. They went at it hot and heavy. Oh, what about? Ah, the same old what about. Keeney said Ben's been holding him down and a lot of other things. That kid's got a persecution complex, I tell you. Stella. Keeney hates Ben. He's just waiting for a chance to get back at him. Now, Stella, please, listen to me. I talked to Ben. I talked to Keeney, too, this morning. This is none of my business, Stell. I, I don't know what it's all about. And besides, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm only talking to you, Randy, because you're a friend of Ben. Because I got no one else to talk to. Yeah, I know. It, it was all right as long as they were apart. Riding on different tracks, it didn't matter then. But now, down there on the same track, pounding down the stretch together. Something's going to happen, Randy. Oh, now, wait a minute, Stell. Nothing says anything's going to happen. No, nothing says it. You won't find it written anywhere. But something is, I know. The horses have now reached the post. Randy, I'm afraid. Easy, Stella. I'm afraid. I can't help it. I got a feeling. They're up and running. Randy. They came out of the gate in the pack, ten horses going six furlongs. They began to string out on the back stretch, canape in front by a neck, Ben's horse, Boson's mate, second by a length over Pedro D. And Keeney's horse, Blue Flyer, was well back. They held their way pretty much coming around the far turn with Keeney's horse picking up ground. And then they headed into the stretch. And in the stretch, Canapé in front by a head, 
Motions make seconds, and next goes the table beat. What time again? Here comes blue flyer between horses. Canopy, motions make next to next, and blue flyer gains steadily. Canopy, motions make blue flyer, motions make canopy, blue flyer. Well, a lot of things happened after that, and all about the same time. Keeney's horse streaked across the finish line, the winner, but the inquiry sign went up just as fast, which meant the stewards were going to look at the motion pictures of the race to see if everything had been on the up and up. Meanwhile, the word foul was rumbling through the stands, and so was a sense of tragedy. Ben Clark hadn't moved at all from where he'd fallen on the turf. The track ambulance made it out to him fast, and a few minutes later, he was in the track infirmary. A couple of pale green runes attached to the jockey room. The doctor was bending over him. Stella sat in the ante room, doing a good <laughs> job of turning her handkerchief into a wet and salty pulp. I can't stop crying, Andy. I can't. Well, then don't, Stella. I don't want to cry. I want to hold up. You do. I can't think of one reason why you should. Now, go ahead. Cry, Stella. Ben can't be hurt, Randy. He just can't be hurt bad. Well, then he won't, Stell. He's pretty solid. He's taken spills before. Yeah. But how long can you keep taking them? Mind if I come in? Keeney. Yeah. How is he? We don't know yet. What did the doc say? He must have said something. He hasn't come out yet. Oh. Get out of here, Keeney. Get out of here. Stella. Peter, get out of here. Get out of my sight. Now, now wait a minute, Stella. Kill her. That's what he is. Maniac. Ben was right when he called you that. Please, Stella. What'd you do? Come to gloat? Oh, Ben ain't dead yet, I'll tell you that. He's too good a guy to die because of a punk like you. I guess I better take off. Uh, Keeney, I guess you better. For your sake, sonny boy, Ben better be all right. Yeah. Can you come out a minute, Randy? Oh, yeah, sure. Excuse me a minute, Stell. Yeah. Kind of upset, isn't she? Oh, it's hard to blame her. Yeah. She doesn't mean half the things she says, though. Only half? Half of what she said's enough. You think like she does, Randy, that I fouled Ben deliberately? I don't know. Wait until the stewards see the pictures, huh? A man's innocent until proven guilty. You're a good guy no matter what. Don't you even have an opinion? On something I don't know about? I thought you told me once before that was kind of dumb. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ride you. I guess I'm kind of edgy. Randy, mm -hmm. I didn't foul Ben. Well, then I hope the pictures show it. There was some bumping in there. That's true. But I don't even know for sure who was bumping who. There were three horses in there. Mm-hmm. I was riding pretty hard. That's true, too. Yeah, I heard about the way you ride. Nothing intentional, though, Randy. No, nothing that seems intentional, at least. What do you mean? Well, we do a lot of things unintentionally that we really mean to do all along. Then you are blaming me. No, no, no. It's just a comment. Like we said, I, I haven't got all the facts. Funny kind of comment. Yeah, maybe it is. Well, I better get inside, Keeney. Stella's alone. All I know is, Randy, that I ride hard. Rough, I guess. Yeah, I'm a cowboy on a horse, like they say. When I get in there, I drive with all that's in me, and I don't think too much. That's because I want to win and keep on winning. But that's one thing. Fouling's another, and that's something I've never Ladies done... Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. The inquiry signs come down. The stewards have viewed the motion pictures of the first race, and the results are now official. One, six, and three. Blue fire... Canopy and Pedro D. The stewards have declared no foul. Well, that's it. You are right, kid. No foul. You want it fair and square. Yeah. So you're in the clear. I'm glad it turned out that way. Yeah, thanks, Randy. Maybe you better go on inside now and see if Ben made out as well. back on into the infirmary. The doctor was there, and Stella had her head buried on his shoulder. At first, I couldn't tell whether her crying was from sorrow or relief. The doctor soon enlightened me. I need x-rays to be sure, Randy. But it may be a broken neck. Yeah. 
NBC is bringing you Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. For millions of Americans, tonight marks the beginning of a three-day holiday. A large percentage of these people will be out on the highways driving to vacation spots, and it is to these people that this message is directed. Actually, we don't like to be grim at times such as these when a holiday is in the offing. Unfortunately, it is sometimes necessary. The National Safety Council estimates that 310 persons will be killed in traffic accidents during the next three days. 310 people will die on our highways. Now, the council hopes that the estimate is high. When you drive this weekend, please be careful. Be alert. Drive only at the safe speed limit, even though it is many miles less than the legal limit. Be courteous and careful. Help reduce the number of traffic deaths on this holiday weekend by practicing the golden rule when you drive. Don't chisel in traffic, or you may be only a statistic on Monday. The life you save may be your own. And now, back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. Well, you couldn't convince Stella that Keeney hadn't fouled Ben. She claimed the pictures just didn't show it. Anyway, Ben was taken to Mercy Hospital where they took some x-rays. Fortunately, it was only a slip disc and not nearly as severe as an out-and-out break. They put some traction on Ben's neck, and in a couple of hours, he was up again. A little wobbly, but navigable. The doctor told him to lay off riding for a few days, and then they let him go home. Meanwhile, Keeney had himself a big afternoon at the track, booting in four winners. That night, I got another call from Stella Clark. She was all upset again and asked me if I could come over, which I did. Mr. Summerfield was out to see Ben a little while ago. Summerfield? He's the man who owns the stable Ben rides for. Oh. He wants Ben to ride in the Memorial Stakes tomorrow. That's a big race. He wants him on demolition. That's the favorite, if I remember mm-hmm. right. Ben wants to do it, huh? Uh-huh. Well, it's up to Ben, isn't it? Doc said to lay off ten days at least. The spill just happened today. He's not ready. Well, Ben knows how he feels. He wouldn't do he it. He doesn't know how he feels at all. He doesn't care about the race itself. It's Keeney. How do you mean? Booting in all those winners, that's what's eating Ben. I don't believe that, Stella. Well, I'm telling you. I've watched him read about it in the papers, listen to it on the radio. What, Stella? Oh. Hi, Ben. You're back sooner than I thought. Yeah. Oh, hi, Randy. Ben, didn't know you were coming up. I called him and asked him. Uh, you told him about Summerfield wanting me to ride tomorrow? Uh-huh. She's worried about me. Well, that's a good sign. She loves you. Yeah, I know. I'm not complaining. Just wish she wouldn't worry, though, that's all. I'm riding tomorrow because I feel like it. Because racing's my business. Gave me everything I've got. Bank account, a reputation. And you, Stell. Oh, Ben. He gave me you. Ben. That's why I'm going tomorrow. And you're wrong, hon, about what you're thinking. Keeney got nothing to do with it at all. convincing, his manner was easy, he was quiet and dispassionate about the whole thing. Then all of a sudden I got a funny feeling. I began to think that maybe he was too quiet and too dispassionate because the truth of the matter was there was going to be another test between them. Ben and Keeney were going to play out any grievances they had or thought they had the only place they knew how, on the track. And to me the whole thing began to feel like a stick of dynamite with a short fuse. The seventh race, the Memorial Stakes, a mile and a sixteenth for four-year-olds and up. Number one, Carmel with Jackie Jake Hubbard up. Number two, Demolition, Jackie Ben Clark in the saddle. Number three, Cover Girl, Steve Abbott booting. Number four, Hurry Up, Jackie Keeney Clark. Number five, Catherine Hayes, Jackie Pete Pinelli. I'd gone on down to the jockey room before the race for a last-minute word with Ben and Keeney. Ben was calm as ever. We chatted a bit, and then he went out to talk to Mr. Summerfield, the owner of his mouth. Keeney wasn't so calm. He stood by himself in the corner of the room, looking out the window, banging his whip up against the palm of his hand. He turned when I came up to him. Huh? Oh, hi, Randy. Hi, Keeney. Well, you got your two bucks on? Well, I figured I'd play it strictly neutral, kid. I... I got two going on each of you. I figured I'd win that way no matter what. 
No matter what. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing, just the pre-race jitters. Yeah, there is something. Randy, you got much influence with Ben. Well, not that I've noticed. Think you can get him to cancel out? Cancel out? It'll be easy for him. He's got a headache or something. Don't feel so good on account of the spill. He don't look so good, you know. He's not up to it. Well, that's up to Ben, Keeney. He's calling it. Why do you want him to cancel out anyway? Well, like I said, he's not in very good shape. It's going to be rough out there. Well, who's going to make it so rough? There'll be ten other guys out there besides him. Including you? Including me. I'm telling you, Randy, if it's him and me coming down to the wire, I'm not letting up no matter how big that spill was Ben took yesterday. No matter how he's feeling. Well, I don't think Ben would want you to. Okay, just thought I'd say it for the record. I'm going to beat him again, Randy. I am. And that won't sit well with him. You've still got to do it. I'm telling you, I will. I'll beat him, you'll see. Like I've wanted to all my life. He's going to get the dirt in his face this time. I'm going to win it. You know, kid, I've heard a lot of guys talk about winning before. But you've got a way of making it sound like it's a sickness. Yeah? Maybe so, Randy. All I know is I've got to win and keep on winning. Why? S simple. Take a look at me. What do you see? I don't follow. What do you see? Look at me. Four foot nine, 98 pounds, a head taller than a Pekingese. Too big for a sideshow and too little for much else. Do you like nice, tall girls with long legs, Randy? That's a silly question. Well, I like them too. But they don't pay much attention to me. They get sore necks looking down. What are you getting at? Oh, you know what I'm getting at. I'm a jock. That's all I'm left with. That's all I can be. So if I'm a winning one, I'm a king. I got money, respect. I got a life. If I'm a losing one, I'm nothing. I'm a... A bust. Face the fact, if I'm a loser, I'm just a little squirt and nobody gives a care. So you see, I gotta win. No matter how? I didn't say that. No, you didn't. The horses have now reached the boat. Even before the race began, you knew it was going to be a strange one. A run between two jocks. The horses less important than the two men up on their back. They are from the beginning, it was a two-man race. Ben on demolition, Keeney on hurry up. The other horses melted away like it was a conspiracy. Coming round the clubhouse turn, hurry up in front by a lake. Demolition, second by three lengths over Kathleen H. Cover girl, fade away, and the fire queen. They held that way past the half-mile post and onto the back stretch. Keeney in front, Ben a length or so behind. On to the far turn, hurry up in front, two lengths over demolition. Empire Queen's third, four lanes back, Catherine H, Grassroot, and Covergirl. Coming into the stretch, and here's Demolition making his bid on the inside. Ben on Demolition began to move. Keeney had two lengths on him, but coming for home, Ben began to lay under the whip, and the lead began to melt. A length and a half, a length. Ben was closing ground, a half a length, the next, a head. And then both of them were pounding toward the wire, neck and neck, riding hard, trying with all their might. And suddenly it happened. The foul was obvious. Keeney's horse lugged in and bumped Ben's mouth. And a rider went spilling out onto the turf. It was Keeney Clark. And up in the stands, you could almost hear his back break. <laughs> Five minutes, Randy. No more. All right, Doctor. Yeah, it's me, kid. I'm a mess, ain't I? Doc says I'll be laid up for months. Yeah, I know. Take some of the steam out of me, huh? Doc says maybe no more riding, ever. No, he's wrong there. If I say I ride again, I ride again. I believe you. What's with Ben? I don't know. I haven't seen him. The stewards, they had a lot to say, I'll bet. No, not much. They saw the pictures of the race. Your horse lugged in badly, bumped Ben's. That gave him the race, cleared him of the blame. They figured you'd foul him to keep him from pulling on ahead and winning. They did, huh? Randy, I'm going to tell you something. I want you to believe me. It's not going to be easy. Go on. I didn't foul Ben. My horse lugged in. It bumped Ben's mount. I know that. But I didn't foul him. Honest to Pete, I don't know what really happened out there at all. Ben. Hi, Keeney. Randy, glad you're here. 
What's the matter, Ben? What happened? You look like you've been through a ringer. Yeah, I have, Randy. I have. Let me sit down. I've been walking. I've been thinking about the kid up here with his back busted. Here, Ben. Thanks. Gentlemen, you ever hear of a louse who never knew he was a louse? A real no-good guy who always figured himself for a prince of a fella? I know a guy like that. You want to know who? Ben. Me. Yeah, me, old Ben, Keeney's big brother. Old Ben Clark, louse. Keeney's always known it. He knows exactly what I was. But so help me on a stack of Bibles I didn't know until today. And when I got a look at myself, it turned my guts. Oh, now, settle down, Ben. Please, Randy, don't stop me. Let me get this out, will you? Sorry. It was an impulse, Randy. You know what that is? Something you do on the spur of the moment without thinking. Something that comes from deep down inside of you, and it's got more truth to it than anything you do. Well, that's what it was. An impulse. Hey, kid. Yeah, Ben? Can you forgive me? Coming down that stretch, I suddenly felt I couldn't let you beat me. The pictures didn't show it, but the foul wasn't really yours. I stuck my whip in your horse's eye. Well, Ben told the whole story to the stewards, and they gave the race to Keeney. Not that it mattered much anymore. What's going to happen now between the no longer feuding brothers? Well, I don't know for sure. Ben's given up riding. He's going to try his hand at training. I like to think in the not-too-distant future, Ben will saddle himself a fine animal, Keeney will get in the irons and boot him home a big stakes winner. But win or lose, Keeney and Ben bear out something I've always believed. You don't have to win to be a winner. In our book, it's how you run the race that counts. And remember, just because you didn't come in first doesn't necessarily mean you're lost. Copy, boy. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis. Tonight's transcribed story was written by Larry Roman, with music by Robert Armbruster. The part of Keeney was played by Sam Edwards. Dick Crenna was Ben. Others featured were Harry Lang and Ann Diamond. Listen next week at this time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. Night Beat came to you from Hollywood. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Friday evening, the Roy Rogers Show brings you an exciting half hour of Western music and adventure. The short story presents three pair of heels by Neil Bell. Short story is your invitation to a half hour of great dramatic entertainment. Consult your local newspaper for broadcast time and join us Friday for Roy Rogers and Short Story. Two great shows on NBC. Tonight, Dragnet brings you authentic adventure on NBC.